Sitting here with Greg Rucka, creator of many, many fine comics that you've read, loved, absorbed. Uh, current run on the Detective Comics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stumptown. Yep. Talk about some of your experiences, I think, on uh, the differences between doing an indie comic and then for a major. Oh, well, you know, I mean, it's funny, I was just talking about this. You do... You do work for hire, right? If I write, uh, try to, you do something with Wolverine, you know, or like even the perfect dark novels here, or Wonder Woman, or Batman. They're wonderful, beautiful, shiny toys, but you have to respect them. And the goal is to put them back in the box pretty much as you found them. And create your own stuff, it's yours. You can do whatever you want. Um, I'm fond of saying, you know, white out, uh, I amputate two of Carrie's fingers because she gets horrible frostbite. I can't do that to Batman. They wouldn't let me. And if I did, you, you know for a fact that by the end of the arc, the fingers would have grown back somehow. Um, either that or you would have had mechanical fingers or something. But you would have to return it to the status quo. There has to be a baseline. And while it's fun to work within the parameters, it's also fun to be able to go, okay, all bets are off. I can do what I want. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think with that in mind, how important is it to sort of, uh, like when you're working on like a major character like Batman or Wolverine or whatnot, how important is it to sort of keep reestablishing an origin history? Like how much of that is a push? Uh, you know, I, I, there's an argument that I've seen that, you know, you always want to have the origin retold within the first X many pages. I, I think that's a... Probably not a uh, can I swear? <laughs> We're a podcast <laughs> that even our girlfriends don't want. All right. I think, all I, I think it's a bullshit argument. Um, in this day and age, the back matter for just about any character is so thick. You don't. I don't. You don't need me to tell you Batman's origin. There is nobody really in the world who needs me to tell them Batman's origin. In the same way that nobody needs to hear Superman's origin. Wonder Woman's origin they need to hear because it makes no sense. It's, it's a broken origin. It needs to be fixed. Um, but, yeah, I, I, you know, we, we're writing... Comics are soaps. These are soaps. Absolutely. And even, you know, not even superhero comics. You know, Stumptown is a PI series. It's a soap. Um, when you watch a soap, you do not necessarily know everything you needed when you, you, you always enter the story in the middle, right? I mean, nobody's alive who was, who, who was watching One Life to Live when it premiered, you know what I mean? Um, and I think it's kind of insulting to the audience to imply that I have to hold your hand and explain everything. Okay, Alfred is the butler who raised young Bruce. He's kind of like his mommy. I mean, come on, you know, if you can't figure it out from what you're reading, yeah, that's not my fault. That's your fault. You're broken. You're not doing your job. And I don't like, I really don't like writers who treat the audience like the audience is stupid. I have, I have never... 30,000 anybody is going to be smarter than one of me, you know? Okay. Um, and it's by, for the same reason I get leery when people do like mysteries and comics and then they start changing the solution because people figured it out. It's like, the goal wasn't to trick you. The goal was to tell you a good story. 30,000 people at damn well better be able to figure out any mystery I can come up with. I mean, if they're all working on it, somebody's going to get it just by guessing. Right. You know what I mean? So I... I I don't like seeing the audience's intelligence insulted, and it happens a lot. So. Okay. Um, I think, and, and talking about writing, I think it's fair to say you're a very prolific writer. Uh, okay. <laughs> this table alone sort of speaks to that. Yeah. Well. How do you manage to do, I think, such a large volume of work and still maintain the quality that you're putting out? I mean... Oh, that's nice of you to say. I'm not sure I do maintain the quality. Um, I think some material is better than others, but I think... But we won't go into names on that. No, I mean, I, I, I can't... I, I'm, I'm a horrible judge of my own work. Okay. I mean, I, I cannot look at one thing on the table, for instance, and say, this is better than this. I tell you that people responded more to say this thing than to that thing. But there's always somebody who, I, I, I'm always, I always do a show where somebody will come up and say, X is my favorite thing you've ever done. And there's a voice in the back of my head that goes, X was crap. 
I totally failed at X. X, X, X fell down. I never managed to execute, you know, on it. So, as to how I do it, that, it's called a work ethic. <laughs> I mean, it's just, and that comes when you have two kids and a mortgage. Um, you, you, you have to do the work because the work's not going to get done. So. Right. You know, I'm, um, I'm not a great businessman. But I long ago made a decision that I wanted to be a good writer. Um, and that morphed into a decision to be a good storyteller, you know, regardless of what the media might be. <laughs> that was my daughter who just crossed in front of the camera there, by the way. Adorable. Yeah, she is. She's got Adorable. the market closed on cute. So, there you go. So, yes, there you go. There's my answer. Okay. And then how do you, that's actually, it brings up a really good question. How do you balance... Like family life is comic book uh, guy. Uh, yeah, see, and, and my answer again would probably be an echo. I would say poorly. Um, no, you know, I mean, the day is divided rather logically. When Jen and I are with the kids, then that is kid portion of the day. You know, when the kids are at school, that is uh, get to work portion right. of the day. The, the downside of that is that um, Jen and I don't tend to have a whole lot of this is our portion of the day, uh, which is something that we're working at. So, Fair enough. Are you looking for the backpack? Uh, oh, it may be with Matthew. See, this is, this is parenting at a con. This is what you're seeing. Parenting in action. And that's, I mean, that's something else. You bring the kids out to the con. How do they react? Um, well, my son, uh, Elliot, is, is 10 and has grown up with comics around him and has sort of incorporated themselves so f deeply into himself that, you know, he's, he's been taking gymnastics for the last two years and yes. he's, um, he, he's kind of night wing in training. Um, Dashiell uh, is six and is still deciding what she likes. So, you know, we get to come to this show, we come to Emerald City, and my son's got one of his best friends in the world lives here. Awesome. So for him, this is a great show. They get together, they get to hit the floor, they get to hang out. For my daughter, she gets to sit behind the table and watch videos and um, glom sure. stuff from people. Uh, you know, she turns on the cute all the way to 11 and, and, and sometimes bats her eyes and sometimes will name drop. Uh, and 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 she's she's sort of figuring it out. So yeah, excellent. Uh, I think it's I think it's fair to say some of your work is a bit darker <laughs> than perhaps your. You know, no, they don't read it. <laughs> well, and that's what I'm wondering. Like, do they just read it? Go like, Dad, this isn't fun. No, my my son my son started reading White Out uh, when the movie went into production. Uh, and 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 Jen and I had a long conversation about whether or not we were going to let him do it. Uh, and then he came and he said, "You, you, there's a lot of fuck in this." And we were like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, there is." And then some things we just don't give him. So, like, you know, I was able. I did the Wonder Woman Blackest Night thing. Yeah. Then I did that pretty much because Jeff asked me specifically, "Will you write this?" Sure. And um, okay, now my son thinks that you know, I, I gained. I gained kid cred there. I had lost a little. And I totally regained it there because he's totally into Blackest Night. So that was, oh, I'm, you know, I, I, you're writing the Wonder Woman thing. It must be worthwhile. That he'll read. Uh, he's read Stumptown number one. I don't know what he thinks of it. Okay. Um, and he was reading World of New Krypton and he was liking it, but I think it got a little intense for him. Um, he's very good at judging what he can take. Um, that makes sense. And, and he always has been. He's, he's always been very good at saying, this is a little too much for me. I'm walking away from it. Um, my daughter, not so much. Uh, my daughter feels that... Um, my, my daughter feels that there is nothing in this world she cannot conquer. And I hope she carries that forward for a while. But consequently, warnings as to this might scare you kind of bounce off her. And then she goes, oh my gosh, you know, and runs. Well, that's a good testament to your work, then. I suppose. You've I've scared a small child. Yes, that is. <laughs> and I, and my work is complete only when I have scared a small child. I test on my own, so Fair I enough. feel it's more responsible that yeah, way. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally.